Uh, welcome back to the lecture series in animal physiology. So, we are in the endocrine and reproduction section. So, we have pretty much covered all the different hormones, except the digestive hormones uh, from the pancreas, which we will be coming back uh, after just after this, when we will be starting the digestive system. So, the tail piece which is left is one of the most important piece, the reproduction. What really governs reproduction? Before I kind of get into the notes and how that works, I have already explained you what is a diploid cell and what is a haploid cells. And <coughs> we have already <coughs> went through the circuit that it is a hypothalamus, which is governed by the higher centers of the brain, which release gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Then these gonadotrophin releasing hormone comes to the pituitary, pituitary releases uh, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone FSH and LH. This FSH and LH surge leads to the secretion of the sex hormones by the gonads of our body, and they regulate the sexual uh, behavior as well as sexual function of the body. So, here before I really get notes, let us uh, get some concepts clear. There are some concepts which has to be cleared here. In the case of males, so we all know the fertilization takes place when there is a sex between a male and a female, and at the level of cells, it is basically a sperm fertilizes an egg. So, sperm are the male sex uh, gametes, and eggs are the female sex gametes. So, there are some very stark differences between the two, apart from their structural differences. Structurally, if you look at it, the sperm pretty much looks like. Uh, so, so okay. a sperm, this is the male sign, the sperm looks like something like this. It has a huge tail, and here you have the nucleus and everything, and this tail is basically what it helps it to mobile. It makes it mobile, this movement is because of this tail. So, this is we call this one second, so, this is the sperm, okay, which is the male, male sex <coughs> cell. And as I explain you that these are all n, these are all haploids. Okay. Whereas, the female one looks more like a roundish structure, it is like an something like an egg. Okay. This is called the female, and this is called egg. And basically, reproduction is all about when a sperm like this fuses with an egg, which has a huge cytoplasm. If you look at the size of the cytoplasm, the cytoplasm of the egg is much more larger as compared to. So, this is n female n, and this is the male n, which is the sperm. And when there is a cross between the two, so basically that is how it works. Here is the egg, here the sperm comes. Then there is a set of reaction here called I'll come to that zona reaction. And when this N fertilize with this N, then it leads to something called which has two N, this is called a zygote. And this zygote is the first cell which is formed in the mother's womb, two N this is a zygote, and a zygote has two possibilities. It could be, so if say for example, if it is in the case of male, which is basically a zygote could be, we call it an x x or an x y. If it is an x y zygote, then this is a male, and if it is an x x zygote, then this is a female. Okay. So, so, this is the contribution, this is the male. So, the female contributes 2 x, whereas the male contribute either it could contribute an x or an y. If it contributes an y, then it leads to a female, or to a male. And if it contributes an egg x, then it leads to a female. So, in other word, it is whether it will be a male or a female is actually not determined by the women. It is actually determined by the male. To if you look at from the chromosome perspective, that's how it looks like. Okay. So, now, what is so important about is this, what we will be studying is this part and this part, how these are regulated, what regulates the formation of this. And the formation of this in the body 
as I have already mentioned the formation of this sperm and the egg. This is the egg and this is the sperm and this is the sperm tail and sperm tail has lot of if you take a cross section of this tail you will see a lot of uh, mitochondria out there which generates a lot of energy for its movement because it has to move a lot okay it is very motile structure so this formation of sperm is called spermatogenesis spermatogenesis whereas the formation of egg is called the oogenesis so what we'll be studying essentially is the molecular players molecular players regulating spermatogenesis and oogenesis genesis and oogenesis uh, genesis so, after defining the problem, what we are going to discuss here, I will highlight two specific aspects. One aspect, what I wish to highlight is that, this the major molecular players in the game are the hormones, which play a critical role. But there is a distinct pattern by which it regulates. In the case of males, as we hit upon the puberty at the age of 15 or 16, our reproductive organ or the testes, they have the potential to produce hormones. In other words, those testicular cells, which are present in the testes, they are initially they also are deployed, they are 2 n, but they have the potential to divide to form n and n and then each n forms another 2 sets of n and n. So, each sperm cell could produce basically sorry each uh, reproductive cell could produce 4 different sperms okay. and this sperm production continues in the case of male for rest of the life. There is no pretty much there is no limit. Of course, the quality of the sperm goes down as we hit upon the age of 50s and 60s, the sperm quality goes down. They are much more you know fragile, they have uh, chromosomal aberrations and everything. Chromosomal aberration thing, there are defects in the chromosomes, because of the aging process take uh, pitches in. Okay. Whereas, in the case of female, the story is slightly different. Female have a limited reproductive age at the age of say 15 or 13 or 14, the reproductive age starts. In other word, what the reproductive and, and that continues up to 45 or 50 or maybe extended up to 50 maximum most of the time, but there could be you know some exceptional situation, but those are rare that, that does not happen every day. Okay. You would not come across individual who are fairly reproductive at the age of 60. So, now what really does that mean? For the males I told you we can produce a male can produce a sperm for all his all uh, his life but so the female every month one egg matures and that one egg is capable of fertilizing a sperm or a sperm is capable of fertilizing that egg so every month that that monthly cycle of a maturation of a egg is called menstrual cycle, which a female undergoes from the age of say 14, 13, 14 or 15 all the way up to 45 to 50. Okay. And that is the phase, when a female is reproductively, uh, reproductively active. Other than that, after that it ceases, that whole process of menstrual cycle ceases and they do not produce any fertilized eggs after that. And what is essential here? to highlight is that, it is a very cyclic phenomena. In the case of males across the month or across the years and across the whole life, once they hit upon puberty, they can produce a sperm. But in the case of females, it is a very, very cyclic fashion. There is a regulation of say 21 to 28 days, when every depending on the female, it could, it could may be even up to say 18 days to 28 days to 31 days, depending on which where I mean it could be a Caucasian female, it could be a Asian female, it could be an African whatever. Depending on the individual uh, race or place from where the female uh, E belongs to, their menstrual cycle varies. It could be 18 days to 31 days. And during this phase, what we will be actually highlighting is that during this phase, 
there is a cyclic fashion of secretion of those gonadotrophin hormones, especially the FSH, LH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And that is what regulates the whole cyclic process. And at the tail end we will be talking about, when the egg gets fertilized, when a woman is ready to give birth, when the zygote is formed, how this cycle gets stopped and till the child is not born, that cycle remains stopped and how that takes place, that is what we are going to discuss. So, talking about this, we will talk very briefly about the male situation, what happens in the male. In the case of the production of the sperm, as I told you, in the males continuously FSH and LH is being produced. This concentration in F of SH and LH remains fairly constant. Okay. And as I have already tell, told you that uh, there are lytic cells in the testes. So, testes is structure is something like that and this is where these different cells are being produced. Okay. So, testes are the one which is responsible for producing of the sperms. So, there are lytic cells, which support in this whole process, FSH and LH helps in the maturity of these uh, sperms and everything. So, this is how the male sex production takes place, where there is not much complexity. It is much more simple and there is no cyclicity. It is all throughout uh, the reproductive phase, it goes on and it may go on forever for the whole life, but best quality of a sperm comes at, at the age of like in 20 to you know, 35 or 40, when the best quality which are healthy sperms, which has the ability to fertilize the female egg and lead to the production of a healthy baby remains in that age. Now, talking about the female, so which is I told you that this is a very cyclic phenomena. So, let us talk about what is happening in the case of females. Okay. In the case of females, so let us again get back to the circuit. So, you have hypothalamus. I am repeatedly drawing this circuit to kind of you know keep the exact track of how this whole circuit is functioning. Okay. Anterior pituitary and then you have the ovaries where these are acting. So, these are GnRH, gonadotrophin releasing hormones and anterior pituitary is releasing FSH and LH. Okay. And this FSH LH acts on the ovaries and leads to the production of different sex hormones. So, what we will do now, we will talk about two aspects here. We will talk about menstrual cycle, which I have already mentioned last from for some it is 18 days to up to 31 days. And what is this cycle? This is here is the important part is the cyclic fashion and we will talk about the fertilization, what happens after fertilization. These are the two aspects, what I, we are going to deal in the reproduction. Okay. So, we have already talked about the production of LH and NH. So, LH and FSH. Now, let us start with so, what I will do, I will talk about four parameters. So, assume a cycle is happening in a female. So, before I get into the cyclic thing, let me explain something else here. So, how that maturity is taking place. So, initially what happens, you have something called a primary oocyte, it is something like this. Okay. This is a primary oocyte. So, I am in the oogenesis now, okay. primary oocyte. Then primary oocyte leads to the formation of something called a secondary oocytes, where the cytoplasm increases in the egg. And these are the secondary oocytes. And secondary oocytes leads to the formation of something called a tertiary follicle. This is called a tertiary follicle. Okay. 
from the tertiary follicle. So, this whole process of uh, formation of primary to secondary to tertiary follicle is governed by this whole maturity is governed by FSH follicle stimulating hormones, okay, which is essentially is responsible for the maturity of the follicle. Okay. After this what happens and this it does so, because FSH leads to the secretion of estrogen. It is the estrogen which is secreted by these cells in the ovary, which leads to the maturity of this from primary, secondary to tertiary. After the tertiaries are formed, that it leads to the another level of maturity, which is basically called formation of graphene follicle. So, continuing from the previous one, graphene follicle. And from graphene follicle, because of LH surge, luteinizing hormone. So, we have talked about the other hormone, the FSH. FSH is involved in all the maturity part. Then comes the role of the luteinizing hormone. What luteinizing hormone does is that it leads to basically this part is released. This egg is actually releasing the eggs, okay. releasing the egg and, and this releasing phenomena is something like this. You have this and here the egg is getting released and this process is termed as ovulation. Okay. So, this whole process by which from primary to secondary to tertiary to graphene follicle to the release of egg falls under something called ovulation and this whole cycle up to ovulation and after ovulation falls under something called the menstrual cycle, which we, we are going to discuss now. What exactly is happening and how this whole process is taking place. So, now what I will do, I will just let me check out that. Okay. Now, I will draw how the surge of follicles. So, this, this whole process if you look at it, if you just think before I draw all the graphs and really show you. So, this whole process if you look at it very carefully is happening, there is an FSH which is coming, which is leading to the maturity of the primary follicle to secondary follicle to tertiary follicle. Okay. Then there is a surge of the next hormone, which is a luteinizing hormone that comes and that leads to the egg to be released from the follicle. Okay. That process is taken care by the LH okay. and LH does so by making those cells to secrete another hormone, which is called progesterone. So, in other words, we are dealing with four hormones here, FSH, LH which are secreted by the pituitary. Okay. Step 1. Step 2, there are of course, let us talk from the even top that hypothalamus secreting gonadotrophin releasing hormone, gonadotrophin releasing hormone at pituitary, it is secreting FSH and LH at the third level. Because of the surge of FSH and LH, there are two more hormones which are secreted which is estrogen and progesterone. So, in other words, we are talking. So, what we will be seeing in the case of female, how the FSH level changes over a period of a cycle of a menstrual cycle, how the LH level changes these two from pituitary and then at the gonads we will be talking about the change of the profile of the estrogen and the progesterone. So, in other words, there will be a graph which we will be showing four different lines of cyclic cyclicity by which it is changing and top of that what are the physical changes <coughs> happening in the body in terms of body temperature, basal metabolic rate and behavior. So, we will be talking about. So, <coughs> you will be now what I will be drawing, I will be drawing four graphs showing the way the FSH level shifts, the way the LH level shifts, the way that leads to the secretion of progesterone and the way it that leads to the secretion of estrogen. Okay. So, let us draw the graph and that will help you to appreciate this whole process. Okay. And simultaneously what I will do, I will draw all the concentration, how they are that is happening. So, let us divide this, say for example, let us talk about an average cycle of 28 days. Okay. So, 
d 1, d 7. So, underneath I what I am drawing is the d 7, d 14, d 21 and this is day 28. So, we are taking an average female who has a cycle of 28 days, this is the cycle fine. So, after every, so, so basically what is happening is this. So, let us divide the phases, this is called menstruation phase, menstruation phase then the next phase is called follicular or proliferative phase, follicular or proliferative phase. Okay. Then on day 21, this is called luteal phase. Okay. Luteal secretory, luteal all secretory phase, these are the different phases. Okay. So, now, what I will do, I will divide the graph into five different parts, which will help you to appreciate it in one go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Now, the first graph we will be talking about from the pituitary, at the level of pituitary. So, let us get the scale right. So, at the level of pituitary, we are talking about like you know 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, the highest limit is 50 and the unit is, so here this is a 0, 1, 2, okay. so, just assume it units per liter. So, this is the level of the anterior AP, anterior pituitary FSH and LH in the blood. Okay. This, these are all done in the blood. So, I am marking F S H with red and I will be marking L H with blue. So, let us talk about how the F S H is shifting. So, the F S H shift is something like this. It has a basal level somewhere here and then the F S H goes down like this and as we reach somewhere out here, F S H level picks up and then it slowly goes down and again start. So, the next cycle. So, here begins the next cycle from here on the next cycle begin. So, this is how the F S H is shifting. So, if you kind of look at it <coughs> at some time out here, some time out here in the case of 20 days cycle. So, one more thing I wish to highlight, I will come back to this graph and say. So, depending on your days like if the cycle is of 18 days, if the cycle is of 28 days or a 31 days, the date of ovulation changes. So, in case of an average 40, uh, 28 day cycle, the ovulation generally takes place at the time of 14th, day 14. Okay. So, now if you come back to the graph, you will say that the major rise took place around day, just before day 14 out here. Okay. So, if I, if this is 7th day, this is day 14, this is one second. This is day 14. Okay. So, just before day 14. So, this is the ovulation that is why I marked it as a as a red circle. Okay. This is the ovulation phase when it is taking place. Now, <coughs> let us see how the LH is going. LH simultaneously, LH remains fairly low all throughout okay. and then it starts picking up here and it reaches somewhere like this, it reaches the highest peak and then it starts falling down again and goes down like this. So, if you look at it around day 14, which is here, out here L h is maximum. So, as I was telling you, there is a cyclic fashion. So, the F s h just before day 14, F S H hits the peak and then followed by with a slight delay out here, look at it, there is a small delay, then the next peak starts. Now, simultaneously what is happening? Because we know F S H leads to the secretion of, now let me, F S H leading to the secretion of your estrogen. 
estrogen or estradiol, okay, whereas LH leads to the secretion of progesterone. So, now we will define how these two hormones are changing their profile. So, their level is if, if in this graph, so again put the amount which is essential. So, they are far more low 0.4. So, this is microgram per liter of blood. Okay. Now, this is the estradiol level and, and compared to estradiol, the estrogen level is higher. So, if I have a corresponding, uh, corresponding so let us pick up two colors first. So, I am putting estrogen, est estrogen as uh, in green and I am using a gray color for progesterone. Okay. So, the progesterone level is higher actually progesterone level if I had to draw a graph for progesterone. So, that will be like you know the top thing will be 16 microgram per ml per liter. Okay. So, progesterone level progesterone secretion is much more higher as compared to estrogen level. So, if you tally this what happens now let us talk about what is happening to the estrogen how the estrogen behaves. So, the estrogen level moves like this and as you could see where this one is picking up estrogen level exactly picks up fairly close to it and then there is a small hump and then it goes down like this. So, if you tally estrogen level estrogen is close to the same peak of as almost the same peak as the FSH, because FSH stimulates the secretion of estrogen. So, that is why you see they are in close sync FSH leading to the secretion of the estradiol or estrogen. What happens next? Now, let us talk about the progesterone level. Now, the progesterone level this is just like your uh, LH that means fairly low out here and mind you the progesterone secreted a fairly high amount and as it reaches and it remains like that almost up to day 14 and then there is a rise in progesterone big time out here and that continues and then it goes down. So, the progesterone level here you see the peak of the here you see the peak of the uh, luteinizing hormone and here you see the peak of the progesterone. So, if you look at this cyclicity the FSH out here FSH here you have the LH here you have the estrogen and here you have the progesterone. This cyclic fashion continues month after month during the reproductive phase of a woman and this cycle is actually called the menstrual cycle, but in this process. So, this is what you are seeing what is happening inside the body. These molecular players are changing their concentration, but there is something else which is expressed. So, every month there is a blood discharge from the women body in the form of menstrual discharge. That menstrual discharge is nothing, but the process by which a female rejects the unfertilized egg from the body. And this process, what we are going to deal now, is how I will tell you. I showed you this diagram just before this. Okay, this how to from primary, secondary to tertiary to the whole process. So now I will explain it in terms of where exactly this thing happening. So now we will talk about the follicular development. Let's come back to the follicular development. Let me, okay, with respect to this follicular development or you can call it a part of that whole game of called eugenesis, the process where this. So, what essentially is happening at this part of the graph is basically you have an immature follicle like this, what I draw as a primary follicle, okay. immature follicle. Then during the phase 2 out here, there is a maturation of follicle. maturation phase and it is at this phase out here. If I have to say if I do just put 2 days back and 2 days forward and this is called the ovulation phase. This is very critical phase 
ovulation. And then comes after the ovulation, if the egg is not being used for fertilization, then this is lost, it forms something called corpus luteum and this is degenerating corpus luteum. And it is at this phase out here, if you look at it. So, it is at this phase when when the new cycle starts, basically this degenerated corpus luteum is being discharged out from the body. And what really this ovulation phase, this is one of the most critical phase. This is the phase, when a female is reproductively active. This is in other words, those during in the menstrual cycle. That phase, when a female sexual activity is at its highest. That particular balance of LH FSH, progesterone and estrogen is the unique phase of 2 to 4 days, when a female is reproductively active. This is the time, if this egg which is formed is fertilized by, an, by a sperm at this phase. If a female has a sex with a man and this is the time, if it is fertilized. And this, there is a possibility that this egg will become a zygote after fertilization. So, this critical window, if I just am shading it, is the most critical window in all the menstrual cycle, in the complete menstrual cycle, in terms of reproduction ability of the women. So, in other words, you can translate it back in terms of, if you look at the female cycle. So, every year, a female has every month, if I look at every, if let us start from the month. Every month, there is a window of 2 to 4 days, when a female is able to fertilize, as the, the egg has the ability to get fertilized by an sperm. So, every month, technically there are only 4 or 5 days, or 3, you can call it 3 to 4 days window, when a female has potential to fertilize its egg to produce a zygote and eventually a baby. So, in other words, if you look at it, the actual reproductive activity of female over a period of year will be around 48 to 60 days. That is it, every month. And other than that, at any phase, if a female is having a sex on any other phase, other than this, if I go back, any of these phases, most unlikelihood that could lead to a formation of a baby. But this is the phase, which is very critical for you to understand. And this is a very, very cyclic and very well tuned activity. And if you look at the way the basal body temperature changes, which I wanted to show here. One second. Uh, so, the basal body temperature remains. So, so let us talk about an average temperature is moving like this. But at this phase, the basal body temperature goes fairly high and then it falls down. So, this is the zone, when the body temperature of a female goes fairly high, because of the action of these different uh, hormones, which are there and metabolically, it is very, very active. And this whole cyclic process is many a times disrupted, but I, as I told you in one of the previous classes on endocrinology, that please look for um, the endocrine disruptors and all those kind of drugs. And many a time, because of uh, imbalance of other hormone, the cyclicity of several women, they suffer from lot of gynecological disorder in terms of, because this whole cycle is being disrupted. They do not get the proper menstrual cycle. They do not get the men's in right time. And it kind of leads to a lot of complications and lot of irritability, lot of behavioral traits, which are very asynchronous behavioral traits, which happens. But if you translate it, without getting emotional, if you translate it in terms of the hormonal milieu, you will realize, it is a very tightly scheduled molecular uh, event, which is taking place within the body of a female. And any disbalance or you know, any shift from that kind of uh, tightly regulated chemical phenomena, could lead to a whole array of behavioral changes, which we really cannot explain straight away. That needs a lot of probing. So, this is very important. I expect you people to appreciate this whole thing, that this is a chemical game of three or four players.